flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Let's shift our focus. Let's talk some Sunday football. There's there's a lot to get into. We'll try and wrap get through these just a little bit faster. Um, we'll start with Sunday morning. Eagles eight and a half. Um, there could be a lot of rain here. It could be some wind. Um, it could be kind of a gross game. And with the Bucks coming in banged up, we'll see what Leonard Fournette looks like. Obviously, Mike Evans a little banged up, um, but no God. No Godwin, obviously no Antonio Brown. Um, is there a world where the Eagles are competitive here? I think the Eagles could definitely stay in this game. I do worry that, yes, we we look at the rain as affecting a pass-heavy team more in Tampa Bay, but just like you said, being this is going to be Jalen Hurts' first playoff game, first playoff start, uh, I kind of worry about the ball security with the team that likes to run the ball as much as they do, especially yep. against the Buccaneers team who likes to create turnovers. Uh, a lot of their linebackers, Levante David, uh, Shaq Barrett is coming back this week. I think there's a good opportunity for the Bucks to maybe create a, a few sack fumbles, uh, you know, returns for touchdowns. The defense could get into the end zone. I feel like this is a spot where, this could be close early with Tampa pulling away late, which is why I, I'm, I'm leaning, laying the points with Tampa. I know I've been on them all year and they've kind of burned me the last two weeks, but this is a team led by Tom Brady. Who knows the regular season? Once you get, once you've already su- cemented your spot really means nothing outside of just getting prepared. Now it's playoff time and they're going to turn it on. So I fully expect the best bucks that they can potentially put out on the field this week. Yeah, that's scary. I, I, you need to get out of my head because the Eagles plus five first half seems like a great bet. Um, exactly. I think this is a game much <laughs> like we saw last week where it's kind of gross and the teams are feeling each other out and it's maybe like 13 to 10 at half. Yeah. Maybe the Eagles even have a, are, are leading. Um, and then all of a sudden it just clicks on the second half and Leonard Fournette's off and running and Jalen Hurts fumbled touchdown going the other way or pick six or something. Uh, and all of a sudden it's 37, 13. And, um, we're looking at a a, a absolute blowout and, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be a couple things that happen in, in this weekend. There's going to be one or two games that are just 400 to 14. And there's going to be a couple games. (laughs) Where the team that we had thought had no chance, yeah, wins outright, and whether that's Pittsburgh or Philly or maybe Arizona, um, I will say, like in this game, being that I do, I do see Tampa kind of pulling away. I love Devonta Smith props. Uh, It's kind of like criminally low right now as receiving yards at forty two and a half. I mean this this guy is their really only legit threat on the outside i mean i I cannot i cannot start to think that jalen rager is all of a sudden going to reemerge as a as a real receiving option or quez watkins is going to threaten tampa here so getting devonta smith at over 42 and a half yards being i do think that tampa will win this and win this convincingly is a good number uh, in my opinion yeah i like dallas goddard's props 52 53 54 somewhere in that range i i think makes a lot of sense um <clears throat> to score touchdowns plus 250 plus 240 and you can actually over at FanDuel get plus five you can get five to one odds on him to score a first half touchdown which i think the eagles start off like well that. and kind of stink to- down the stretch um so that could be a nice like i could i could see the eagles having a nice opening drive dallas goddard t- getting a touchdown everybody going oh here we go this could be yeah. it and then brady and company just dump truck them the rest of the way um, and we're, we'll laugh about how we thought the Eagles had a chance. So, um, th- those are some bets. I, I also like if you like Tampa, you know, if you can bet it however you want. But I think either taking a piece at eight, eight and a half yeah. and then betting it live or just waiting to bet it live and, you know, taking uh, getting the, the bucks at six and a half, maybe four and a half somewhere in there um, and, and really loving life. 
Uh, next game, let's go to the afternoon game. Uh, I think the most compelling game of the slate for me um, is the San Francisco 49ers heading to Dallas to take on your Cowboys. Um, the line is three pretty much everywhere. There is one three and a half at minus 120. Um, there is seeming to be a lot of Cowboy money, and it's kind of the three is going to minus 115 maybe minus 120. So you could potentially get the Niners at three and a half if you really like them. Yeah, it, this this was the most terrifying potential matchup for me as a Cowboys fan coming into the playoffs. Even, even living with a wife who is a Cardinals fan, I would much rather suffer another loss to them or even another matchup with them. Uh, this 49ers team is one that you and I have both talked about numerous times this year as a sleeper, in, you know, to compete for the Super Bowl. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, how this team could, you know, make their way into LA playing for the Super Bowl. They're built to beat the Cowboys. Um, if they can give Garoppolo protection from this crazy Cowboys pass rush, like they are built to complete those short passes with this West Coast style offense and have their uh their rack rack crew, whatever the hell they call them, you know, IU Yak crew. Yeah, Yak Dogs crew after the catch. Like just torch the, this Cowboys defense who have been saying it all year. They create turnovers, but they right. also give up a ton of yards. So you know who's a great quarterback to have a team that creates a lot of turnovers off of? It's Garoppolo, uh, yes. I Jimmy Garoppolo, who will <laughs> throw you two or three. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to convert them and potentially turn them into points, um Dallas could win this game comfortably. I was, that, and that's, that's, that's kind of what I was going to say. Like, I feel like this is the, basically the same scenario as that bills game that we were talking about where you're either taking San Francisco money line or you're laying the points with the Cowboys and yeah. maybe even, you know, getting an alternate line of them minus six and a half, because if the Cowboys are going to play their game, there's yeah. an, <laughs> there's definitely a possibility they're winning this by double digits. And then yeah. on the other side of the spectrum, the 49ers, if they're winning this game, that means that they're playing their offense. They're controlling the clock. They're getting big chunk plays through yak yards. Like, um, I don't really see this being a game coming down to a field goal by San Francisco. So, it, it, I I could see I could I could see it being a late score kind of solidifies it. Whether that means the Niners, you know, it's it's a two point game. The Niners score a touchdown. All of a sudden, you know, they go for two. It's ten, or yeah. the Cowboys are up you know, up six or five maybe. Um, and they kick a late field goal with about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And all of a sudden it's, they're up by eight. But yeah, I think I, I, I could see this being a, an incredible game for three and a half quarters, but the final score, not necessarily being indicative of the whole game. But yeah, yeah especially I don't, because I don't see Robbie gold out there kicking a game winning field goal no. with, as and I don't see the Cowboys trusting, uh, who used the man formerly known as Legatron, who is more like freaking Legotron. It can't, it's his accuracy has definitely fallen yeah. by the wayside. Uh, so with that being said, I am taking Niners, Niners, Niners plus three and Niners money line will be on my card. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm in a pool where we have to pick each game every week. And just for my, for my pessimistic uh, Cowboys fanhood and to protect myself, I am also going to be picking the Niners with the points and the Niners money line here, hoping that the Cowboys still win, but um, it, it they need to play their best game against a yeah. team like the 49ers. Yep. This really is going to come down to which team can assert their dominance and play the way they want to play. Cause they're very different. And I yeah. trust Kyle Shanahan over Mike McCarthy. Oh, yeah. Um, and honestly, as you were, you know, you kind of alluded to it, like we'll, we'll get into the Monday night football game here in a minute. Um, but that those two teams are the two teams I trust the least and would love <laughs> to have Dallas playing the Rams and the Niners playing Arizona. Um, let's talk about the night game, which is the biggest spread of the weekend. Chiefs minus 13, minus 12 and a half, depending on where you look. Um this line opened at 13 and a half. It's down. Um, I, I think that has more to do with the Chiefs not really being great at covering and whatnot. But like, I, I don't understand it. 
I, I don't understand the love affair with Pittsburgh of late. Uh, let me just let me just throw this out there. So this, the Steelers played seven games this year against teams that are currently in the playoffs. They went two and five in those games. One of their wins was week one against the Bills, and their other was against the Titans, who were very injured when they played them. Okay. Yeah. And the Titans they've lost their completely last three, shit the bet on that one. Yeah, they've lost their last three road games against teams that are in the playoff, and including a 36 to 10 loss against the Chiefs. In those five losses against these teams, it's by an average margin of over 18 points. Yep. I am I am confidently laying the two touchdowns with Kansas City here, and I'm not looking back. Um, Football Outsiders DVOA has this team, I think, as the 24th best team behind like the Bears, and they have adjusted DVOA, which adjusts for like their recent yeah, form. And, uh, uh, they're 26th behind the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you all you need to know. Now, my I guess my concern is the Chiefs are up 24 to nothing. They aren't worried one bit about Pittsburgh. No way. Derek Gore runs the ball 20 times and Chase Claypool catches a 70-yard touchdown with no time left on the clock and it's I don't know, 20, it's 20, say it's 24 to nine. And all of a sudden the touchdown become, makes it see 24, 16. And that's, but that's just something for me. Like I don't see Pittsburgh being able to play a game like that. Even, even getting that garbage touchdown, because in all likelihood, what's going to wind up happening there is Kansas city is going to get a sack fumble or an interception. Like the, the, what if, what if offense is not capable what if it hits Kelsey in the chest and the, the secondary picks it off or TJ Watt hits running back by committee in the backfield fumble Steelers pick it up, run the other way. Yeah. I mean, but I feel a, like, I feel like in those scenarios that puts a little pressure on the chiefs and they end up kicking the crap out of them. Anyways, they don't, they don't leave the back door open. So that's exactly what I think we're going to see here with Andy yeah. Reid kind of allowing like Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey, like we said, to take it easy of late. I don't think this team is going to want to screw around here and give Pittsburgh any hope, knowing that they are not the number one seed. They are not the favorites. They've been knocked down a peg here in, in the AFC. And I really feel like he's going to be on them this week to put the pedal to the metal. And we're going to see the best Chiefs team that we've seen pretty much in a while. Yeah. I'm trying to find the team total for the whole game because um, I think there could be some some interesting spots here for sure. Uh, let's see. So KC is sitting at a, at thirty and a half. What's the what's the Steelers though? Sixteen and a half for Pittsburgh. Yeah. See, like I, like I the like the under on Pittsburgh there. I, I think I like I think I like it. Either. I think I like that number. Because I think there's a world where if it's close, it's low scoring, right? And the and the Steelers score like it's it's like twenty four to thirteen, and if it's a blowout, it's forty two to thirteen. Like I don't I don't think this, especially with Big Ben. Um, I also have one other note I want to pull up. Ben Roethlisberger is zero and eight all time in the playoffs when he throws the ball thirty seven times or more. And he's thirteen and one when they when he throws less than thirty seven times. This game is set up for Ben Roethlisberger to throw it forty five times for an average throw of like three yards. I was just gonna say exactly, and and they end up losing. Yeah, that and that's why I I do not see Pittsburgh being able to score fast enough. Yeah. to accumulate points at the rate that is going to be needed to cover the two touchdown spread. Cause this defense right. is not capable of slowing down an offense. That's ran by a quarterback of Patrick Mahomes stature. I, I know TJ Watt is amazing, but one guy isn't going to ruin an offense that is as good as this one. All right. So 13 and a half was the Steelers team t- team total 16 and a half for Pittsburgh. 16 and a half. Perfect. Uh, I will take the Chiefs minus 13. I will take the Steelers team total under 16 and a half. And I'm fully prepared for this to be the game that completely flips everybody's brain and the Steelers <laughs> win. Um, and and 
the path for the playoffs gets even easier where the Titans, if the Titans can re can play Pittsburgh and then like, I don't know, some other crappy team in the Super Bowl, that would, that would make me very, very happy. Um, you mean okay, like one of these crappy teams we're about to talk about?